Well, some can claim that episode 23 of Gunman the Witch of Mercury was a little bit anticlimactic. <laughs> I have to agree in some sense, but at the same time, there was a lot of really interesting stuff in here and something specifically that I want to dig into that our Discord had a lot of fun with, so... Yes, let's jump into it. What Gundam series would not be completed without some secret government gigantic laser? We didn't get a colony drop, but at least we got the gigantic laser weapon of war that just comes out of nowhere. But now let's get the unpleasant trees out of the way. Let's get Andrew's big beef out of the way. Yes, Gyul and Lauda's fight. The fight itself was cool. A lot of emotion in it. Did enjoy that aspect of it. I really did like how it was sort of wrapped up with Felsi just popping up out of nowhere and saying, dude, you guys are idiots. <laughs> Which I think is great. But yes, I still remain my frustration with it, despite some people, you know, obviously going to explain it. I just once again did not like how Lauda went from here to, in this episode, literally becoming a mass murderer over that it just it just it feels so forced into the situation but putting that aside besides the fact that i really like the ending to it i like felsey showing up to remind people felsey's a character that's always timid and hiding behind people and then out of nowhere she's just like you idiots knock it off <laughs> so it was really cute but yeah putting that aside now that that my my continued frustration i don't need to dig into that over and over again. Let's put it off the side. The rest of the episode was pretty great. And I, I really do like the fact that this is kind of this build up, everybody coming together to kind of push into this whole situation. This could have been easily just Sueta goes out on her own and handles the situation, but it's really more about everybody coming together to fight the situation. And I like how it sort of ties in things with Miurin in the past to sort of be a part of the fight itself. Coming in there, Sweat to fighting Edict, you obviously have this divide between how the two of them see the situation. Edict's trying to do everything her for her mother, which is kind of interesting, because we've had this entire series, it's been Prospera claiming that she's doing everything for Edict. Whereas in this situation, it's Edict saying that she's doing everything for mother. It's, it's kind of this two-sided thing that you, you kind of wish somebody would get across to them, especially before Edict presumably gets taken out. I always had this feeling deep inside of me that Prospera isn't necessarily doing this for Edict. She loves Edict, but she's not doing it for Edict. She's doing it to get revenge and have Edict take over everything. Sort of hinted at in this episode as well, this idea that, yes, technically Edict, how she is now with the data storms and everything, is not something that could live amongst people. So she has to create a world where Edict can exist. So I still think deep down, Prospera is doing it for Edict, but there is another side of it. I think that she's doing it for revenge. And I hate the fact that it's not necessarily figured out, again, before Edict is taken out. Now, Edict could still be around in some way. They might find some data storm residuals and there's Edict right here and they'll put her inside of a little hotto uh, <laughs> ball or something like that. But for now, the assumption is that she's gone. So maybe we'll get maybe Prospera's perspective at least in the coming episode. Because obviously she has lost like her one core thing. But still the fight goes on between Edict and Sueta as she's struggling over this whole thing. And they're really pushing this idea that Sueta, you're fine now. Like go and be yourself. Go to school. Have fun with your friends. Even Prospera says that at some point. I do love Sueta, but she's got people. She's got you guys. Just go on and be happy together. Don't get involved. We're trying to create a place for Edict. But again, from Sueta's perspective, she doesn't want to stand by and watch this happen. She knows what they're doing is wrong. And this is kind of the sad thing because it, it ultimately pushes Edict to this final point. If you're not gonna step back, I'm gonna do something. And I really do hate the fact that this has kind of gone this far, that we're seeing Edict to a point where she's gonna do something incredibly horrible, which is take out everybody that's important to Sueta. It sort of doesn't make sense. I think it's too far. I think this is almost a little bit too forced. I don't see Edict going this far. I can see Edict trying to disable Sueta and push her away, but I don't see her going, oh, well, if you won't turn back, I'm gonna kill everybody important to you. You need to go back and be to school and be with the people that are important to you, but I'm gonna kill them all now. It doesn't really necessarily make sense, but it does technically open the door to this big theory that is still left in question from this episode. What stopped the data storms? What caused the interference? My initial thought was that maybe there was the first edict wasn't on the shoulder of the Gundam. That the real edict, the core, the first edict was actually up inside of the Quiet Zero. But again, as we kind of discussed it on the Discord, 
it makes more sense that it's actually Mjorn's mother. And this is getting into the theory that possibly Mjorn's mother, and we might find out this in the next episode, maybe Mjorn will talk to Delling and Delling will tell her, yeah, actually, I think I know what caused the interference. It was your mother. That when your mother was passing away, we put her inside of Quiet Zero because she, I wanted her to be a part of this system because it would make sense. Because again, Edict was about to do something extremely horrible. What was she gonna do? she was going to kill Mjorin. And so it makes sense that at that moment, yes, it could still be the original edict inside of the core saying, you're going too far, you're taking away what is special to my, my sister. But I think it makes more sense that it was this specifically that Mjorin's mother finally said, stop, stop. There was something in play. It could also be the idea that it's not necessarily Mjorin's mother that is inside of it that stops it, but it could also be this idea that there is code within the system that will not allow it to harm Mjörnin. It detects that Mjörnin's there, the system shuts down. But based on the idea that Edict is literally talking to the system and saying, why now? What are you doing? Stop, not now. It makes sense that it is something that she's talking to. A core within there that, again, is Mjörnin's mother. So it's a possibility that before all this stuff, Prospera had figured out how to put Edict inside of the data storms she could have learned how to do that from Delling because he did it with his wife. Or Delling could have put his wife into the data storms knowing how Prospera did it. It could be one of the two. That's the thing that makes the most sense because even with the following scene, you see Prospera, she's getting all ready. She walks to the door and she says, I got to get rid of some pests. Again, she knows that Murin is the pest. Murin is causing the problem. I need to go get rid of Murin. And like I said before, I do like this callback, even though, again, technically it was sort of brought up the last minute <laughs> in the last episode. It has been an ongoing thread, this idea of Mirren's mother having, you know, created these tomatoes genetically, having been part of Quiet Zero, that eventually that when Mirren gets in there, yes, the way that she's able to tap into it is that she kind of sidesteps the code, gets in there, reprograms the opening screen, and sees her mother's login. And so she knows, well... It may be possibly the password is going to be this code, this this I, this concept that she's always going to be with Murin, which I think was a cool little callback. It was a cool little way for being able to get inside there and stopping the system. But yeah, the, <laughs> the Haro the Haro gunman is was, was quite the funny thing to see. Just all these cute little balls and ch -ch -ch all this kind of stuff going on. But no, I think the fight between everybody was really cool. Eden. Gets a great scene for once. Uh, this entire series, I've been so sick of Clone Eden. Finally, he gets a good moment where he, yes, doesn't take out Prospera, but somehow manages to stop her. Belle gets some guts for once and stands up for herself. But no, the conversation between Prospera and Mjorin is like the deeper thing here. And the idea of it really kind of establishing, what do you really think of Sueta? This whole time, it gives you a sense of Prospera only using Sueta. But I think the idea of how she kind of pushed Sueta away a while back was just her saying, okay, you were happy in this school. Go be happy. You've established what you want. I've given you an opportunity for your dreams. You gave me what I need out of you. Go do this. But it does give a sense of it almost being a give and take and not necessarily a relationship. This is establishing no. Prospera does love Sueta, just not as much as Edict. And Muren really pushing in her head, then why don't you treat her equally? You're treating Edict as your priority and you're pushing away Sueta. Why don't you treat your two daughters equally? Which, yes, I guess the big question is going to be at this point is what's going to happen to Prospera after this? I, yeah, there's a there's a hint that there's a possibility now that Prospera has lost everything. She's just going to end it. I've lost my last thing that I've been fighting this whole time for. She lost everything back here with the Venetus Institute being taken out. What purpose does she have in life anymore? And I think it's probably going to be her shifting to finally care for Sueta. Though I think she's going to be locked up. <laughs> I think it's going to be, you know, Sueta going to visit her mother in the lockup and she's going to be in there just kind of like, oh, I'm sorry, Sueta, that I ruined everything, blah, blah, blah. But yes, this whole time, there is one major thread involved with the whole situation, and that is the assembly. Assembly, when you take the opportunity to take out something that threatens it, uh, decides that it's going to use this gigantic secret laser that was supposedly designed around being used for transferring power. They're going to use it for destroying the Quiet Zero, which honestly makes sense. This thing's coming towards us. It is a massive threat to everything. We need to get rid of it. But the problem is that they don't accept the idea, like what Delling says, hey, we've, we've handled things ourselves. Let us handle it. Okay, it's handled. Go away. No. 
too late. You guys are causing too many problems. You're too much of a threat. We're going to get rid of you. And we'll, we'll take responsibility. We're going to have pill institutes over here just kind of handle everything afterwards. They're going to help us out. They're really looking for a complete rework of the system itself, which can technically play into the second season. I'll get into it later. But like I said, I was a little surprised that we didn't get a colony drop, which is typical for a lot of Gundams. <laughs> but it looks like we're going to get the massive laser uh, in this one. And yes, Edict doesn't want it to harm everybody. And so she jumps up in front of it and stops it. Sadly, while it does sort of hurt a little bit, it wasn't as impactful as I was kind of hoping it to be. And maybe that's because they've kind of spent too much time away from Edict herself and to kind of bring her in in the last like five episodes or so doesn't give you enough time to really connect to Edict. So I do kind of feel it's a little bit of a letdown, but at the same time, it's impactful to every character there. And obviously the most, Sueta, and will be for Prospera as well. But again, there's a chance that that's not it. There's, a still, there's still a chance that there's a part of Edict somewhere. Again, going to the theory that the shutdown was caused by Edict, the first Edict, Maybe the one that was on the shoulder wasn't the first edict, and the real edict, the core, is still inside of Quiet Zero. So she can still be possibly saved, but Prospera is looking pretty upset. I don't think Prospera would look that upset if it weren't for the fact that Edict's gone. Now, she could be upset because of all the other edicts are gone, and they're all still technically her children. But still, I, I think they could have nailed that a little better. Now, yes, people had to call me out because Sueta didn't die. I still think there's a chance that she's going to die. <laughs> so my thoughts on the next episode. I really do feel like there is a chance that Sueta, after doing this whole fight, could possibly either be extremely physically damaged or possibly not be able to live much longer. They put so much emphasis on, even though Sueta has a resistance to the data storms, she's not impervious. And you can see it throughout this entire episode. She had to keep above permit level 5. And... That was seen in her her character. And yes, her, her Seiyu. Hats off to the Seiyu. My gosh, that entire, this entire episode was literally her breathing heavily and just gasping and fighting and, and, and saying things. So she did an incredible job. I need to go tweet out to, if, if, her, if she's on Twitter, I'm going to tweet out to her and say, my gosh, great job. But again, it kind of shows that this entire fight, she was suffering. Sueta was suffering. There has to be some sort of blowback from that. The whole emphasis of this entire series has been on the damage of the Gundams themselves. How it kills the pilot. Why have an entire fight where Sueta is going over the limit and literally dying the entire time without it having some sort of impact on her? She could still possibly at least it be fatal from this. Or they could just shrug it off in the next episode and everybody's happy and we move on. Again, I think that Prospera is going to get locked up. She's going to be wanting to reconnect to Sueta. Sueta is going to be visiting her. Other than that, I think it's going to really rely on the idea of if this series is going to get another season. There is a live stream that's apparently going to be going on after the final episode. That could just be for them to plug their other stuff. Like, oh, hey, come over here afterwards. Let's show you some Gunpla. Let's show you our other projects, Gundam Seed movie, all that kind of stuff. It could be to another season. If it's not to another season, if we're not going to get another season announcement, then I think it's going to turn into essentially Delling and the Benerit group going to the assembly and saying, look, we won't reveal that you have this secret laser and that you're using it to attack people and you won't talk about Quiet Zero. Both sides will be hush-hush and we'll move on. The system doesn't change. Mirren becomes the lead of the Benerit group and they move on and everybody's happy. If we do get another season announcement, I do believe it could turn into an aspect of the Benerit group versus the Assembly. Miorin and everybody trying to stand up against the Assembly who literally nearly took them all out. I don't think it's done enough to really prove that the Assembly is a big nasty. Yes, technically people at the head of the Assembly were essentially trying to take down the Benerit group. They were people from the original Earth Ox group or whatever it was called. So those playing cards could still be in play and it could be against, again, this new Benerit group. I just don't think that's enough to really sell another season. There really isn't too much here left to really wrap up other than exposing the Earth Ox group and the assembly and the fact that Quiet Zero existed to the public and then Muren stepping up to the plate. But it does lead into one of my hopes that I've had for this series. The one theory that I had for the possibility of having another season is this idea of doing a time jump. What would be going on in the, the universe in 10 years? Seeing all these characters grown up, they're now adults, and they're moving on into, I don't know, the workforce, and then they have another kind of dispute over powers. That is essentially what Gundam always is. 
it's so easy to create another story arc. Not that it's simple. The, the base premise of a Gundam is easy to set up. It's simply people fighting over power, developing new technologies and seeing who has the most strength and taking over everything else. It's after that, that's the difficult part. That's all the writing of the characters and everything like that. That's where it gets difficult. And so it's, it, you can easily set up for a new part. It's just, what are they gonna do with it after that point? They've kind of mentioned the idea of how there's all these different areas, the Lagrange, different sectors, whatever. There, there could be other factions. There was another thread that they kind of opened up in the idea that Eric at some point mentions, this is a matter for those that live inside the data storms. And now it could be simply Eric talking about her and all the other sisters. It could also be including, again, if the theory is correct that Muren's mother is inside of the data storms, it's sort of hinting at this idea that Eric isn't the only one. Maybe it could turn this aspect of the will of those into the data storm itself and possibly their ability to live on. Again, technically the core theory of what this whole series was built on hasn't necessarily been fully fleshed out. Dr. Cardo's original idea is that humans cannot live in space. That, that space itself harms humans. So what's the possibility of them getting further into that whole idea and possibly trying to evolve mankind? Edict is sort of a prototype for what they could possibly do with that. This idea of giving up yourself to the data storms. This can, that could be a core concept going forward in the background that is brought to light. It also makes sense that we might get a sequel because we didn't really see much loss <laughs> in this, this episode. And I know that's going to be an issue for a lot of people that it's Gundam. A lot of people have to die. It's got to be super tragic. But I, I, I don't subscribe to the idea that it has to have death in order for it to be impactful. It's impactful through writing. And typically when deaths are impactful in shows, it's because the writing's really good to follow it up. I don't necessarily think that we have to have a bunch of characters die, but it could be that these characters aren't dying because the story is still continuing on. Technically, Edict, who has been at the core of the whole story itself being killed, should be impactful. And again, I don't think it's very impactful because they didn't do a good job of really kind of reintroducing Edic to the whole picture and really kind of selling her as a person and not necessarily just a uh, data that's in a machine, not necessarily herself, her body. Maybe if they showed briefly that her body is still inside there and this destroyed it, it may have been more impactful. Again, there's, there's other things they can possibly do in the following episode that can probably open the door for more stuff, but we'll have to wait and see. But anyways, that's my thoughts on episode 23 of Gundam the Witch of Mercury. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always. If you did, make sure to hit that like button down below. Comment. Let me know the thought of the episode. What do you think of my theories? Do you think it's Muran's mother? Do you think it's another edict? Do you think it's just the system itself had code within it that the mother set up beforehand? Let me know. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button so you get all my content. I do news reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, I will be doing a finale impressions next week. So I hope you guys will join me for that. If you like this content and you want to support it more, I have a Patreon link, tips link, super thanks, membership button down below. I greatly appreciate everybody that supports the channel and y'all take care.